right, welcome to the IS24 uh, virtual science one week. I'm Mrs. Mark Antonio, seventh grade science teacher, and today we are going to be using stomp rockets. So let's just go over some safety procedures. As you can see, we are outside in a nice open wide space. Um, we would love for you guys to do this at home, but we do require purchasing our dueling rockets. Um, and since I brought my own two children today, it's going to be great to have the dual stomp rockets to try out. Uh, so these are the things you're going to need. Uh, they do come with everything, the rockets and the stomper. Uh, again, permission from your parents. I suggest open the field. Don't even try this in your backyard. Uh, I would say safety goggles. Just to protect your eyes. You're never going to stand over the stomper. Um, and now we're going to go over to the field and we're going to try out with my two kids. All right, welcome back. Um, so we're going uh, to use a lot of physics today. So how much force these two young men are going to apply to the stomper to affect how high the rocket is going to launch. So for reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So we're going to try uh, two different tests. We're going to do a one foot stomp, and we'll get that. And then we're going to try a two foot stomp. So uh, this is Andrew uh, and Matthew. Wow. All right. So on a three, two, one, we're going to do a one foot stomp. All right? Three, two, one. I can't. I missed it. <laughs> All right, so in order to demonstrate Newton's second law, we're going to see how much mass has an effect on how high the rocket will go. I teach 7th and 8th grade science and right now we are going to demonstrate Newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction with bottle rockets. Our variables today are many but the ones that we're controlling are the amount of water in each rocket. So over here we have Miss Mark Antonio. She has a full bottle of water for her rocket. Next we have Miss LaPorta who has half of water full box rocket, whatever that is that I just said. And the third, our esteemed scientist, principal, Mr. Santa Maria, has a half a bottle or a quarter, quarter, a third. Yeah, something like that, right? Mr. Santa a little, a little yes. less. A little less? Yes, a little less, okay? So that's going to be our variable that we're testing. We're going to see which of these rockets will go the highest in the air with those amounts of water. And we have other variables that we aren't going to talk about because we can't control 
them, like the wind and things like that, but it's all good. So if you want to do this at home, you will have to purchase one of these Aquapod launchings uh, sets, which Mr. Santa Maria is setting up right now. Um, it does not come with a bottle, so you have to save some soda bottles. So to do this, you have to fill it with water, and then you put the contraption, the launch set, um, upside down with the bottle. And then you're going to take the metal spoky thing, something, and put it in the ground so that um, this won't move when you pull the string. There you go. Excellent. And then the string is about 15 feet away. And safety. You have to make sure that you are far away from this when it launches, okay? Do not stand over it. You have to be at least 15 to 20 feet away from the bottle. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do 10 pumps. Wait, where's the GoPro? <laughs> Am I still recording? Yeah, step back though, yes. <laughs> wait, I'm gonna... Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, hang on, let me get the GoPro. Okay, Matt, you ready? All right, this is Santa Marie, whenever you're ready. Three, two, one. Ooh. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> okay, Matt, you ready? All right, Mr. Santa Marie. Okay, so Miss Mark Antonio is now going to do almost a full bottle of water to see if the force will be higher and the rocket will go higher. Remember, stay 15 feet at least away from this while you're pumping the water. 10 pumps. Mr. LaPorter setting off the half full water bottle. Again, you have to turn it upside down on the launcher. Push 
it down. Good. And then put the spiky thing in there. Hold it down. Well, what would you call that? A spear. A, a spear. A spear. Thanks. <laughs> the spiky <laughs> thing and the pokey thing. <laughs> Someone say spear. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Amoroso, and I just wanted to talk for, with you a bit about the science that we use today to launch our bottle rockets into space. Basically, um, this is the same science principles that NASA and SpaceX use every time they launch their rockets into space. So when we just launched the Falcon 9 on May 30th, they use the same basic principles that we use today. So basically, we use Newton's third law. Um, Sir Isaac Newton was a scientist back in the 1700s and he basically transformed um, our notions of gravity and motion um, forever in science. Um, today we use all of his laws. Um, anytime you're moving you're, you're probably using one of Newton's three, uh, three laws. So the one that we mostly talked about today was for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So Rockets work by ejecting something out of the back, which would be your action, and then a reaction force then pushes the rocket forward. So in the diagram that you see, we have a black arrow pushing out to the right and a blue arrow pushing to the opposite direction to the left. So the black arrow represents your action. That is usually some type of um, combustion going on, usually with some type of fuel. And that exhaust then is pushed backwards. And the reaction and the opposite equal reaction is then the blue hour arrow pointing to the left, showing that the engine is pushing forward. For us, we used water and air pressure. Now here, the water and air are shoved out the back. The water is heavier, so that's what gives the bottle the main force, the main kick that you saw, the main um, action that propelled the rocket up into the air, the bottle into the air. The energy to force the water out is stored as air pressure inside the bottle. So what we did was we pumped air into the bottle and the bottle already had air in it. So this was additional air into the bottle, causing it a lot of pressure inside the bottle, pushing on the water. But the water couldn't go anywhere because it was locked into place with a clip. And that clip was being controlled, whether it was hooked onto the bottle or it wasn't hooked onto the bottle by a string. So once we pulled the string, then that allowed the water to be released. Once the water was released, the air pushed down on the water. It released out the back. That is your action. Your reaction was the bottle being thrown into the air. So the air pressure built up. We released it. Once it was released, you see this big water plume coming out, which you see in the slow-mo video. And that water plume is the action. And then your reaction was the bottle going up in the air. We hope you had fun because we did.